All right, when it comes to simultaneous equations, we can solve simultaneous equations in two possible ways. We can use the substitution method, or we can use the elimination method. And I'm going to show you ex with exactly the same question how each one would work. So let's suppose we do substitution on this side, we do elimination on this side. I'm given x plus y equals to 2, and I'm given that x minus y is equal to 4. And the concept, remember, is to solve for x and y. All right, we're going to do exactly the same one on the right-hand side here, but we're going to use elimination. Okay, so let's have a look at this. This idea, I'm just going to put sub for substitution, LE for elimination. So from here, when you use a substitution, you got equation one, you've got equation two. So what you're going to do is create the third equation, equation three, from either, question, either equation one or equation two by isolating y or isolating x, and you can choose. So I could make this, I could rewrite this as y equals 2 minus x. I could also rewrite this as x equals 2 minus y. And I could do the same thing with the other side. So this equation over here, I could make x equals to 4 plus y. I could also make this equal to moving the y and the 4 back this way. x minus 4 equals to y as well from there. Now, from this here, I am just going to choose one of them randomly. There's no, they look very similar in terms of difficulty. So I should choose any one for now, but let's say I had three, four over here and 14. Then I would use this equation to get equation three because it'll go faster. All right. So using equation one, so grade three from one, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to make y the subject of the formula. Okay. So I'm going to make y the subject of the formula. So therefore, I'm going to move x to the other side. It's going to become negative. So y is going to equal 2 minus x. And I'm going to call this now equation 3. The next thing I do is I substitute. I'm going to substitute equation 3. Now, because I created it from 1, I'm going to substitute it into equation 2. I created 3 from 1, so I then substitute it into the equation I did not use yet. In this case, equation 2. And so when I substitute this, I replace the y value in equation 2 with 2 minus x. So I get 2 minus x in place of y equals to 4. That's x minus 2 plus x equals to 4. x plus x is 2x plus 2 on the other side becomes 6. So x equals 2, 3, and I've now found the x value. All I need to do now is find the corresponding y value. So to find the corresponding y value, what I'm going to do is substitute x equals to 3. Substitute x equals to 3, and you can substitute it into equation 1, you can substitute it into equation 2, or you can substitute it into equation 3 and find y, right? You can choose which one you want, but I'm going to substitute it into equation three because it's already has it already has y the subject, so y will equal two minus three, and so y equals a negative one. All right, now I can check this as well. If I do check this, I know x is equal to three, so three minus one equals two. Equation one is correct, and three minus minus one is equal to four because it's plus and that's equation two so it's correct so i can guarantee i have the correct answer which is the nice thing about equations in most cases you can check it and if you can check fast you know you're right okay and you will know if you're wrong and you can fix it up quickly guarantees you the results right all right so that's substitution let's have a look at some elimination now elimination I need to have two of the coefficients exactly the same or the negative of each other. In this case, I have both of them. What's the coefficient? It's the number in front of x, 
right? So that number over there and that number has to be the same. And then I, like the word says, eliminate. So in this case here, if these two are exactly the same, if I subtract them, they will disappear. They will eliminate. So if I subtract the second equation from the first one, going straight downwards, x minus x goes to zero, y minus minus y becomes y plus y, which is 2y. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And yes, we can get negatives. We can also get fractions. And now I divide both sides by 2, and I got y equals to negative 1. I know it's correct because I checked it. And I know if I check it again, I first have to get the x value. So now that I got y equals negative 1, I could have found x as well. If I added, for example, then these two would have disappeared, and I would have ended up with 2x and 6, and it would have got me 3. So that I could do as well. But I'm going to substitute it. So I'm going to substitute y equals a negative 1 into equation number 1. And so I get x minus 1 equals 2, because that's y, negative 1. And so that becomes 3 x equals to 3 and i'm done and you can see elimination if you understand how to do it it goes quite fast if you prefer a substitution that's perfectly normal it's perfectly fine in most cases you won't specifically get asked which method to use but if you do get asked you can you can use it or just choose which one you'd like all right so on the left hand side here we have substitution and on the right hand side here we've got elimination method. Now, let's move on to the next part. I've got a bit more complex equations. Which one will be better? Again, I'm going to stick with the left hand side being substitution. And I'm going to stick with the right hand side being elimination. All right, so that's going to be elimination. And I'm going to write down two equations I want you to try let's see if you can try so you try these so let's suppose i've got x plus y equals to eight and x minus y equals to four and here you want to use substitution to solve it you just want to test your ability to do both before we complicate it a bit after this and elimination exactly the same thing so x plus y equals to 8, x minus y equals to 4. Try that. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's have a look at the first one, substitution. Okay, so substitution coming through. What I need to do here, I'm going to call this equation number 1, I'm going to call this equation number 2, and I'm going to develop equation number 3 from equation number 1. And I'm going to say x equals to 8 minus y. All right, and I can make x a subject or y. Then I'm going to substitute equation number 3 into equation number 2 for x. So I'm going to end up with 8 minus y minus y equals 4. That's 8 minus 2y equals 4. That'll be 4 if I subtract 4 on the other side, and that's equal to 2y. And if I divide both sides by 2, y will equal 2. I can then substitute y equals to 2 into equation 3. And I get x equals to 8 minus 2, which is equal to 6. So x is equal to 6. I can check it quickly. 6 plus 2 is 8. 6 minus 2 is 4. So I know my answer must be correct that one for the next one elimination i am going to subtract again what happens if i add let's have a look if i add let's say i add these two together and x and x will become 2x and you can add or subtract all right there's many many ways to solve those problems it's not simply one way in this case i could have added or i could have subtracted if i added then the y's disappear. If I subtract, then the x disappears, and I find whichever one first, and I find the other second. So in this case, 
x plus x is 2x, y plus minus y will eliminate. All right, so it'll become 0. And 8 plus 4 is 12. I'm just plusing, plusing everything, all right? Remember, this is y plus minus y, which is the same as y minus y, which is 0. Okay, so that this eliminates, all right? 8 plus 4 is 12. x becomes 6. And now I substitute x equal to 6 into any one of the equations. So I'm going to call this one 1, and I'm going to call this one 2. I'm going to substitute it into 1. So 6 plus y equals 8. And so y equals to 2. And now I'm done for that. And I did check it over here. If I do check it again, I know I am correct for this. Okay. So in these two examples here, we want to solve, on this idea, we want to use substitution. And I now have a number in front of x, 2x minus y equals to 4. And I've got x plus y is equal to 8. All right. And I want to solve for x and y over here using substitution. I could use elimination as well. But let's use elimination on a different example. Let's suppose I've got 4x minus 3y is equal to 2 and I've got 2x plus y is equal to 8. Okay, with these coefficients in front of the numbers, in the first case over here, I can remember that's part that's equation 1 and that's equation 2. I can make equation 1 or equation 2 into equation 3 where I make y or x the subject. So I'm going to use equation 2 now because it looks easier. And I'm going to say x is equal to 8 minus y. Now, easy can be your own definition of it. I mean, that for me looks easier, but that can also be easy if I make y the subject. So 8 minus y moving x, I mean, moving y across, making x the subject. Now I'm going to substitute equation 3 into the equation I did not use. So this is going to go back into 1. 4x. So wherever x is, I'm replacing it with 8 minus y. And so I get 16 minus 2y minus y equals 4. Moving the 16 across, it'll become minus 16. And so if I'm minus 16 on the side, I get 4 minus 16 is negative 12. Negative 2 minus 1 is, using integers, negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 3, and so therefore I can see cancelling out and 12 divided by 3, negative divided by negative is a positive, getting me 4. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, y equals to 4. The quickest way to find x is to substitute y equals to 4 into the third equation, and 8 minus 4 gets me x equals to 2. I can do that immediately, so I'm substituting y equals to 4 into equation 3, and so therefore... I've got x equals to 4 as well. So they're both equal to 4. Is this correct? Let's check. If this is 4, then this becomes 8. And then 8 minus 4 is 4, so that's correct. If this is 4, and this is 4, this is 8. So that's correct as well. Let's have a look at elimination now on the right-hand side. Here. Elimination on the right-hand side, I am insisting on using this method, let's say. And in this case... If I subtract these two, I get, so if I subtract, what happens? I got 2x minus 3y minus y is minus 4y, and 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Or I can add them. If I add them, 4 plus 2 is going to be 6, and 3y, negative 3y plus y will be negative 2y equals to 10. But what's the problem with this? The equation does not eliminate either, so I can't find x and y. I can only eliminate once the number in front of x is the same. And that can be for y as well, and I can eliminate y. So how do I make 2 into 4? I multiply it by 2. But because it's an equation, I have to multiply every single term by 2. And so I end up multiplying every single term by 2, and I create a new equation number 2. Now at this point, I can rewrite both equations and then continue again. So if I rewrite both equations, I got 4x minus 3y 
equals to 2. And I'm going to rewrite this equation, which is going to be 4x plus 2y equals to 16. And now I can see I have that which I can eliminate if I subtract. So I subtract, it disappears. Then I've got negative 3y minus 2y, negative 5y. The minus and the plus, minus override the 2, minus 6 is negative 14. And y equals to negative 14 over 5. So y is equal to positive 14 over 5. Negative 14 over negative 5. Two negatives become a positive from there. All right. Now that I have that, I can substitute this. I can substitute this back in to find x. So if I change y over here into 14 over 5, I can substitute it back. I can do that separately. Take your time with these ones because these are more complicated now. So 2x plus a fraction, 14 over 5, equals to 8. Let's leave 2x on this side. Let's work out 8 minus 14 over 5. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 minus 14. 40 minus 10 is 30. 30 minus 4 is 26. So that's 26 over 5. Divide by 2 on both sides, that becomes 26 over 10, which is 13 over 5 for this. And so x equals 13 over 5, y equals 14 over 5. We're now dealing with fractions in our solution. I can put this on a calculator carefully, and let's see if I end up with the answer. I mean, if I put 13 over 5 in here, just to check, if I put 14 over 5 in here, I'm going to have 2 times 13, which is 26 over 5, and plus 14 over 5. It's going to be 40 over 5, which is 8. If I put 13 over 5 in here, and 14 over 5, just to check if it's right, 4 times 13, 4 times 10 is 40, 40 plus 4 times 3 is 12, is 52 over 5. So this would end up as 52 over 5, minus 3 times 14 is 42 over 5, and that becomes 10 over 5, which is 2. So yeah, this is correct. And I did a quick check. I could use a calculator, or I could do that in my mind as well. Here we use substitution, elimination, and we could use either method to solve it. Okay. All right, let's move on to you trying something like that now. Okay. So let's have a look at two questions. Well, let's just do one question in total. Let's do one question in total using the idea of coefficients. So I want you to solve for x and y. And I want you to try the elimination method. Even if you get fractions, don't be afraid of it. So you've got 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. And let's say you got 3x plus 4y is equal to 8. And you want to solve for x and y by trying to get the coefficients to be the same. And you want to use the elimination method just to practice it. If you use substitution method here, you'll find it will be a little complicated because, for example, if I make x the subject of the formula, I'll have to move 3y over, then divide it by 2. And so I end up having to substitute that into the second equation, which is now a fraction with a variable. The elimination method sometimes works out better in this cases if you can get the coefficients correctly to be the same. All right, and don't forget the concept that if you get any, get this multiplied by a number, you've got to multiply it all the way across, and likewise with this one here. And you can do both of them. You can multiply both equations to get coefficients the same. Choose which one you want to eliminate first, and then from there, give it a go. All right, try it. So what we have over here is the case where we have to now multiply each of them by a number to equate the coefficient. So let's say we take 2 and 3, and we convert them into two new equations, into two new equations such that these two equations will have 
the coefficient 6x in front. Okay, so if I do some kind of calculation with this, in which case I make 2x into 6x and 3x into 6x, then I can subtract them and they'll disappear, right? In order to get this to 6x, I have to multiply this by 3 and I have to multiply this by 2. And so I do the same thing across every single number in the equation or every single coefficient in the equation. And I do exactly the same thing on the second one. So this is going to be 2 times 3 times 2, which is going to be 6x plus 9y equals to 18. And I'm going to make this my new equation 1. 2 times 3, 6x, 2 times 4 is going to get me 8y and 16 and this is going to be my new equation 2. Now I can subtract the 2 and if I subtract the 2 now I am definitely going to get something eliminated from here. Right so I'm going to subtract and I can see that 6x minus 6x will be 0. It will disappear completely and 9y minus 8y comes to 1y. So this will become y, and 8 minus 16 is 2. Well, that's nice. So now I can substitute y equals 2 into any one of the four equations, actually. I can use any one of those equations to get x. I want to use one that's more simple than the others, so maybe I'll just use equation 1. The first one. So let's say I go 2x plus 3 times 2 equals 6. So 2x equals to 6. Uh, sorry, 2x plus 6 equals 6. So 2x equals 0. And so x equals 0. And yes, that's possible. It's possible to get 0. We can check now. Did we get this right? Well, if I put 0 in here, that will disappear. If I put 2 in here, I get 6, and if I put 2 in here, I get 8. So yeah, that's correct. x equals 0, y equals 2, and we done that.